Hello Lovely. there. I'm John and welcome to our 353rd live art tutorial where we showcase amazing artists and some of their tips and techniques from around the world. Today we're zooming to England where we're going to be joining watercolour artist Catherine Beale to create an illusion of sunlight. This one hour class is a prelude to Catherine's longer two to three hour workshop webinar that we'll be holding in a few weeks time and gives you a taster of some of the things you'll learn if you sign up for the full event. Uh, although you can just watch, I recommend painting along as you tend to think of the right questions to ask when you're doing it rather than just watching it. Uh, so without further ado, uh, we'll zoom to Catherine now. As we journey to England, you can find the reference photos as well as recommended art materials on our website. There's also a link to the class info in the description below. And if you want to watch other classes by Catherine, simply visit our video library on our website and search by artist. Here we go, we're zooming in. Hello, Catherine. Hi. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi there. Now we've Lovely got a bit of a roving you. camera feel to this uh, to this it's event gonna today. It's going to be shaky. <laughs> it's yeah, going to be a little shaky. bit shaky uh, because mm -hmm. unfortunately we weren't able to activate Catherine's other camera, which um, we, we tried. We were five minutes in and we just thought, oh, well, to hell with it. So at least we've got one <laughs> camera and at least we'll be able to see what Catherine's doing um, art wise. Yeah but we may not be able to flick between Catherine's face and the art. But, you know, oh, well, you win some, lose some, as they say. Yes, um, I know. I'm As we're speaking, I'm still last-ditch attempt trying to arrange uh, for the main camera. But what we'll do is we'll be using this little, um, my uh, mobile phone, and uh, we should be getting on all right with that. At least that's modern technology for you. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Well, I can't wait to, to get started. Uh, before we do, though, uh, just a quick 30 second word on how today's live events going to work. So first of all, we're going to walk through the preparation that might include talking about the process, first layers of paint. Uh, we'll then take a pause in the middle and look at some examples of Catherine's previous works of art for inspiration, as well as talk about what we're going to be doing in the upcoming two to three hour workshop webinar with both cameras activated. Um, it's a <laughs> promise. And finally, we'll complete the tutorial after which you're more than welcome to share what you've done either on our Facebook page or on our patron WhatsApp group. Um, talking about our patron WhatsApp, we've been having a discussion literally this morning about how we can feature some new artists, particularly oil painters. So if you're part of the chat, I'm more than happy for you to recommend some like Steph did this morning so that we can get in touch with them. Um, anyway, let's go back to Catherine and we'll start putting paint to paper. Yeah. Back with you. Right. Yes, I've been allowing my my camera, but it's just not not playing ball, but we will sort it out before next time. So it's really lovely to see you all. Um, apologies for this slightly shaky camera. Um, what I'm doing is panning around just around to today's subject. Um, it's all about the illusion of, of um, light. So let me just give you a little bit of a close up on that image that we used to actually advertise today's session. So this is um, a light, obviously sunlight on a ridgeway. It's burning through um, all the forms. And that's what I really enjoy. I'm, I'm a watercolorist who used to be an oil painter. So I'm very keen on um, quite heavy paint. So if I zoom in, we'll see how much we can cope with um, this area here, solid, solid paint. And um, these days there's such fantastic paints available. Um, if I could just show you this wonderful Elizabeth Crimson, Windsor and Newton, super thick tube paint. So I tend to use tube paints a bit like a, an oil painter. And uh, this gives really strong colors. Um, on top of that, I tend to use some of the more modern colors. Um, we've got things like, cadmium yellow which if I just take unscrew the top this will be fun with one hand with the uh with the phone let me show you how strong that is that's cadmium yellow for you very powerful stuff so a combination of solid paint and actually using some of these more modern paints like cadmium yellow um really does provide um the tools to try and um suggest our, um, light. So let me just pop this now onto the camera holder and I'll make sure that you get a decent view. 
Can I just say it's I when I saw the thumbnail of this art, I thought it looked fantastic. It looks it's it's got a certain simplicity to it, but that that burning the burning colours as you describe the burning sensation, yeah, is, comes across really really well. It's a lovely a lovely landscape. Right. Well, I'm I'm hoping that this is not too blurry for you guys. So this is the actual um, top of the ridgeway. We've got a little bit of detail on the far side, a little tree there. So what I'll be using is a combination of three different brushes. So um, we're going to have the close up view, I'm afraid, at the moment, but um, uh, you'll be, should be able to see everything that I'm doing through that. So this is the main brush I'm going to be using. It's a one inch um, flat brush um, and it's uh, once wet. It's extremely um, sharp. I actually can cut through my paint with it actually. So you can see the sharpness of that brush. That's why I enjoy it. On top of that, look, I can actually pull down the paint from the horizon very easily. So you can imagine you could feed in solid paint because um, one of the key things about imagining light is you need to actually um, place solid dark paint up against the white of the paper. So this is the white of the paper completely reserved. The other element is um, creating um, a, a, a very smooth surface um, in, around the light. You don't want too much grainy, um, paint textures. So what I've got around there is a lemon, Windsor lemon or lemon yellow. So that is all close to the light. It's um, very nice and uh, fine paint. It's not granulating too much. And um, when we're getting down towards this area, we're actually looking at some wonderful paints like Daniel Smith's Moon Glow. That's a very, very granular paint, very thick indeed. I'm also using Burnt Umber. So if you've got those with you, that's quite a, a useful paint. Most of you probably will have that. And those flecks of blue that you can see, I'm quite into quite um, a saturated colour. So I've got some ultramarine there, French ultramarine. Um, and then if we're getting back down here, well, well, we'll deal with that in a second. Let me start. So I'm going to place my board up here now. I'll just show you the type of board that I use. It's board rather than paper. So let's see if this will fit. Dale Rowney. It is cold pressed like most um, watercolour papers. It has a surface description but no weight and that is because it is watercolour art board. So normally you'd have um, Aquafine. Uh, this is the, the brand for Dale Rowney. And instead of art board, there'll be Aquafine paper in there. So um, it comes in a, a pad of 10. Great stuff. It absolutely stays still, refuses to budge, which is wonderful. So um, as I'm going to ladle on um, paint and water in a minute. So that is the advantage of that. It will not buckle like a lot of watercolour paper, even sort of 300 gram or more doesn't work for me. I'm so heavy handed. So what I'm doing here. Can I just I'm say, making... Catherine, you're doing a mm. great job with this makeshift camera. You're, oh, you're... thank you. I, I can see you it's moving like... things around because obviously it's closer than the other one would be. So well done. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. It's very up close and personal, isn't it? So intimate, <laughs> an intimate session today. <laughs> so what I often do is I actually even put a little note to myself W, W for white, white paper. If I'm going to get the brightness that I desire, I've got to leave this area dry. Um, in fact, what I think I'll do is, because we are rather close, I'm gonna make this a tiny bit smaller so you get to see everything in a small area. So free hand circles, Oh, one of the hardest things to do. So we've got a rough circle there. I find that I can usually rub this pencil out, which is handy through paint, I mean. So that's quite good. So now what I'm gonna do is gonna take my large one inch brush. I'm gonna make up where my um, ridgeway is gonna be. I don't really mind too much about where it's gonna be. Um, so I'm going to create it as I go. I don't know how easy it's gonna see, hooray. You can see my um, uh, daisy uh, palette. I quite like them. They seem to re resemble 
um, blobs of paint rather than big rectangular palettes. So just had a little bit of a cascade of um, dioxazine purple pouring out of that as I tilted it for you. But Lovely. <laughs> not your day. <laughs> not my day. Waterfalls of colour. I'm sure the result of this painting will, will make up for it. <laughs> so what I'm doing now is um, a, a technique that I use quite a lot. It's basically wetting the page before I put the paint on. So I'll wet the page and I'll wet the paint and the combination of these will create, create some real atmosphere. So you're gonna see most of this pouring down around this circle. So where I've wet the page, the drips roll. So can you see that? I can actually see it drying out underneath here, quite close to the lights. So I might have to just encourage it around the bottom. So that's raw sienna, quite a straightforward um, traditional paint color. It's very natural, it's not too glowy. Let's get closer in. What I've done now is I've loaded pretty much solid cadmium yellow on there. Look how powerful that is compared to raw sienna. So cadmium yellow for me, I think of as a saturated raw sienna. So I sort of separate out these um, paints into how bright they are for this topic. So I'm going to just re-wet around here. I'm going to go in with um, a little bit of red now so it's not too dull. <laughs> so down near the um, base of this sun it's going to start hitting the ridgeway. Let me get another incredible paint. So this is permanent red. Another almost I think of them as traffic light colours these. So permanent red is effectively um, the sort of colour um, that doesn't appear in nature that much, but if you're looking at um, almost um, a semi-abstract painting, you can you can imagine that there be sort of glares, flares of, of colour um, created by the sun. So I'm just going to go back in there. Let's see um, how those wonderful paints run together. Really beautiful. Now, this is the area of the Ridgeway. Can you imagine? Um, we're loading on some darker paints now. Um, what I'll do now is I'm going for that burnt umber. Do you remember I had some burnt umber? In the tube, here we go. So I'm gonna pop that. I'm gonna now paint like an oil painter. Here's the tube, here's my brush. I'm actually going to take some of that onto the brush. You can see that there great lump. This is not what a lot of the watercolorists end up doing. But can you see it behaves brilliantly because we've got solid paint in there. So total strong silhouetted um, ridgeway there. And then I can go in and just play with that paint. Let's make it run as well. Look how powerful that is. Now we mentioned the idea of some ultramarine. Again, I'm going in with quite a heavy bit of ultramarine there. Now you can't see below that level, so I'm going to stop there. Let's get a little bit more on this side. And we're going to have a tree up on this um, raw right-hand side, I think. Drop that down a bit so that we can start to suggest a tree maybe in the second half. Yeah, now it might be stating the obvious, but obviously doing this gravity painting, which is fantastic. I love this technique. Um, <laughs> it Obviously you need your art on an incline and obviously the paint does drip off. So do make sure you're protecting <laughs> your carpets. Hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. I actually luckily purchase huge sheets of boards in a very large plastic bags and I'm using them all the time. Right beneath my easel, there is a, a sheet of that stuff. It's under my palettes too. Some of these modern colors, particularly stain, they're, um, you know, the, uh, they're, they're, they get inside a material and um, paper, just into the actual matrix of the paper itself and do stain a bit. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start worrying some of these edges. So they're not going to be quite so powerful. You can see where the solid paint is still there, but we don't want solid paint all the way along. So I'm going to, I'm just going to suggest a bit of a cloud over to this side because we don't have much space. I'm going to just build up a bit of an edge 
So let me just change this a little bit more. So we're lowering it down a bit more. Gone in with the um, raw sienna on my brush and we're going to just make sure that there's a cloud form appearing on this side, but it's going to catch the color that is um, in this sunset. So we've got a little bit more of that cadmium yellow going on, that powerful punchy yellow. Now it doesn't look like a cloud. I haven't sort of added detail inside the cloud. Let's start to do that. So best thing to do for clouds is inside is to try and build up some mass. Um, what I'll tend to do is I'll paint wet and wet on the inside of the um, cloud. And um, then what I'll do is I'll create some bulk. So when I mean bulk, I mean, clouds are 3D, aren't they? They have um, uh, shadows within them. So I'm gonna make some shadows now. The limit to this uh, area that you can see is going to limit how big my cloud can be. Let's just remove some of that. I've got kitchen roll here too. That's a very a must with this gravity painting method. It's um it's rushing everywhere. So now the other wonderful thing about this board is I can actually wash away paint. Look at this big brush. It's still being used. I haven't changed brushes, and it just softens through that cadmium yellow. Do you see now we've got just a blurry edge? So you can play with this. I'm going to put a little bit of lemon yellow in the center. So Windsor Lemon, the lightest tool in my paint box, it really is almost the color of light. I just, I'm gonna go straight from the tube again, just for control. So you can see that is on there. bit of a glow forming now. Uh, the interesting thing is I'm not right in front of this and my circle is not very circular, I've just seen. So let me get around. We can tidy up these edges. I'm gonna jump to the next size brush for this. Are you working from the side? Because I can't actually see where you're sat, Catherine, from this angle. Yes, but... I'm on the um, left hand side of my page, but I'm right. just getting in front because the one thing you can't do is do very accurate circles when you're not in front of your picture. No, no, exactly. So I'm come round and now I'm using this second brush. This is um, what I think of as almost like an eraser tool. It's a lifting off brush. Um, it uh, is stubby, so you can actually push through the length of the brush onto the page. Let me show you. If I want to say soften that edge, I just rub it there. And the thing about why I can do this is because of the sizing of this paper, this board. So um, Dale Rowney, it's well, they produce a well-sized art board, which means that a lot of the paint doesn't actually go inside the surface of the board, which means it's on the surface, you can, you can lift it off. So I'm just going to use this tool to blur the edge of the sun. So I'm just being very insistent and pushing. You can see the wet from the from the um, the new brush. See how you can cut cut in. So a lot of people these are sort of techniques that a lot of people maybe don't think of. Um, they don't find them familiar with watercolor. You can, you can imagine scraping off an oil paint or an acrylic paint from the surface of a canvas. But because of this solid this surface is also sized well, I can actually lift off from this. That big old W doesn't look very lovely, does it? As soon as the base is dry, I'm going to rub that off so we don't have to look at it anymore. So the thing about lifting off that I find so gorgeous is it's very, it's a blurring effect, which creates glow. So it's not really enough to have um, an edge that's hard. You need a blurred edge and then it starts to give the, the illusion of, of a glow. So that's starting to come along. Let's just put a little fleck or two of 
bright light over here. It's a bit darker than I expected. Let's get some lemon yellow on there. Got to keep the lemon yellow very clean on your palette. It um it dirties, muddies very 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 quickly. Being the lighter lighter paint that you've got in your arsenal. So there's a little bit of glow on this um, from the wet water, so you might not be able to see some of the lower detail. Move this up. Let's just show this lifting off brush. These are the drips. Actually, you can't see them, but let me move that up. Look at those drips. <laughs> that is from the gravity painting. Now, what I love about it, some people might find this incredibly messy. What I like is this sort of thing. You can't create that with a brush. So I'll do that first. And then, yes, of course, I might get rid of some of this if it doesn't work for me. But you can do that with this lifting off brush. So this strange shape, let's get rid of it. Ta-da gone so it really does take the fear for beginners out of painting this upboard um, but also on top of that for me it gives me the chance to change my mind so I can use my imagination as much as I like here because I know I can remove things after and so that adage that everyone says that watercolors is the hardest medium well with this board it's not nearly as hard as you'd think um, you just need to know how to how to use the board. So that's the lower area. We've got some some dark colours in there, which I will use for my um, tree that I'm going to put on. But um, John, I'm thinking I'll let this dry a little bit, and then I'll do some more detailed work on top yes. using the um, the thorn tree. So we'll, um, we'll stop for our little break now. Then yes, I think just to let that that um, dry. I think that yeah. might be easier. No, yeah. no problem. OK, great. A really interesting start. And um, I think actually it's, it's quite nice having this camera, even though it's this secondary uh, stand in camera because we had problems with the first one. I think it's quite nice uh, to have it really close up. You can get a, a, a you, can, you can feel like you're there. And poor old Catherine <laughs> reaching <laughs> round from the side to paint. I think you're doing a remarkable good job painting at an angle. Absolutely fantastic. Um, gravity and at an angle. Uh, we should add that to your repertoire now, Catherine. Um, so now now we're going to uh, take a look at some of Catherine's previous works of art. Um, we do this with all our artists in these uh, one hour classes just to get a little bit of inspiration. I'm hoping that we will be able to see the art, I'm the, too. the I'm camera, have... but um, we'll, we'll have a look. So what have you pulled out for us? So the first thing I'm going to show you is I wanted to keep on this theme, actually. Yes, perfect. I'm just reaching for um, pictures. It will it will stop wobbling in a tick. <laughs> <laughs> so. Lovely. Work out where I am. <laughs> so this is um, a barn that I know well. So I've made up a lot of this um, uh, painting. So a bit using the imagination. It's got the similar idea to what we've been doing, a, a sort of a, a solid horizon line. We're going to put in some trees in a minute um, with the rigger, which is my final brush, which I haven't shown you yet. Let me show it to you now. It's this, so very fine. So this will work up the tree device or motif um, very well. It also is very useful for um, the eaves, small details like that, which is why we're, we're leaving it till after the, the um, um, background has dried. Down here there's the salt which a lot of people like to use. Um, this is rock salt. The effect is it actually soaks up some of the paint and creates a, a sort of filigree hole. So that's a rather beautiful effect and you can see lower down that effect of gravity painting. Look at the whooshing colours. So that's what happens with gravity painting. Here's another picture. Getting a bit more more uh, adept at handling this. <laughs> oh, it's always in mirror, that's the trouble. So let's get right out. Mm, it's going to be hard. It's quite large, this picture. It's, um, I, I want to get the effect, this. though, of the, the way that you've done the light streaming the through the trees. Exactly Lovely. I'm trying to show. So, do you remember I said that um, you can use this lifting off tool, effectively yeah. a short, stubby brush? 
that is how I've made these rays, pulling the brush down through the paint that I've already put on. So um, an interesting technique, but very useful when you're talking about showing light up because that wonderful softness is, is really helpful. This is another print, which is on the similar theme as today. Yeah, it's a bit better. Oof trying to get it in focus. So this is a, the sun, just like on the Ridgeway. Yeah. And it's this time it's eclipsing grasses. So a more close up, up scale, really. Yes, yes. And um, but a same similar theme. And uh, down below, we've got some interesting things. We've got um, some little moths. Um, this one doesn't have a grasshopper. Sometimes I put grasshoppers in. Um, certainly small, there's another little moth there. So you can make up um, what you like because these are actually lifted out of the paint again. So anything pale, you can lift out of the paint. So this little moth. Looks like there was quite a few layers there that you did layering up. Yes, that's right. Um, there's a lot of paint on this painting. It's, um, so I just wobbling around there. Yes, you can see here, we've got some of the sap green is a major contender here. Got lots of sort of water marks in the painting. Um, wonderful favorite of mine, quinacridone violet, love that. The mauve is um, sort of mauvey color. It's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. And of course you bring them back into the top. You know, you've got some sap green up here. You've got some violet, little splashes that unify the painting, hopefully. Can you, can you go a bit closer to where the sun is coming through the, the grass? Because that's, yes, if you can. <laughs> um, there you go. Yeah, there we go. And our grasses are rather cute, aren't they? Yeah. So that's the, the rigor. Yeah, great. Yeah, because you don't, when you see that, you don't see the full stem, do you? They break up because the, the light is bending around those grasses yes. and you've kind of shown that some well. blasts blasts them um yeah. and so i've actually put some in in the red or the orange colors and and not bothered with their natural color because the sun actually does that and also look lower down there's a few rays that have been lifted out this is this softening effect with the lifting off brush that i've got in my hand yeah. my... so you can and that what the wonderful thing about that is you do that last and it goes through everything you painted before Mm. So quite handy. Um, on this theme, I had, uh, apologies for my sleeve, I had um, a, uh, an article in the Artist magazine in September, and this is actually uh, the subject that I was um, writing about. It's, it's basically, I'm going to try and do this with one hand. <laughs> it's the meadow, a meadow scene. So that was the, the um, source photo. Sorry if I'm giving you a headache with all this shaking. And this is the beginnings of the painting. So actually we've got a plan. We've got masking this time on some of these white features because you can't lift okay. off right back to completely white. And then, yes, you can see me lifting out here. Quite a common thing for me. Even the big brush can wash lines, like sort of lines of straw. The surface is shining a little bit. But anyway, so that's um, a very useful tool, that lifting off brush. Um, yeah. Let me give you one last, I'll come, I've got two more actually. Here's one that um, people who know my work will be familiar with because it's one of the older ones, but you don't necessarily have to have blasting sunlight. So I'll just adjust this so we don't go. Oh. <laughs> it is difficult. You're, you're doing a brilliant job, Catherine. Well done. You're going to get 10 stars. I'll keep calm and carry on. <laughs> um, salt effects. We were talking about filigree of salt uh, in the previous picture with the barn, but this is actually creating vegetation with salt. And this is a glow. So we don't have a sun in this, but there's a feeling of the sun, uh, particularly up here. Now, let me zoom in a little bit. Do you see how if you actually wash away forms, they look like they're being eclipsed by weaker light. So all the way along here, there's a hint of blue to suggest the sky. Sort of a there's light a and a mist as well, in a way, you could almost say. A bit of atmosphere, yes. Yeah. 
So um, you don't want that everywhere, you know, elsewhere there's much more cl clarity, you know, down at the bottom. So it, by comparison, that area feels more ethereal and sort of like water vapor lifting up. And then the very last one I thought I'd show, which is going to be a tricky, sh tricky thing to show. Let's see if um, the glass makes it too shiny. I'd recently had an exhibition, so most of my work is actually um, glazed. So, um, right, let's go out and out and out. <laughs> just, just to add another dimension of complexity in this yes. filming, let's get some glass reflection we in there as well. They Let's say water is luminous. Everything seems to be luminous <laughs> right now. So this is called Den Building. It's rather a cute lo little local picture. Um, you know what we've had, uh, fantastic autumn. Um, the leaves carried on on the trees for a very long time. So I'm just yeah. resting yeah. my hand a bit. And um, the uh, colours in here are the power of modern pigments. That's why I wanted to show this. So this incredible opera rose. We've got... Um, uh, a uh, cadmium, sorry, hold on, a uh, cobalt turquoise, and the punchy, that cadmium yellow back in. So the whole lot is very bright. So this is how I tend to paint, quite bright these days. So that's a recent one. Yeah, no, that's that's brilliant. Wow, thank you so much for sharing that. I love your use of colours there, actually, Catherine. Yeah. Really, really lovely. They're quite pretty, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. This and it goes to show you don't have to be, you know, accurate to the scene. You can just, you know, whatever colours take your fancy, just go with it. And it's the use of light and shade that really makes the makes the paintings pop. Um, so what did you think of those? They were they were fantastic. And um, let me know in the comments uh, which ones you liked and why. And I'll read that to Catherine in a minute. Um, and also, if you're watching this on YouTube and you're loving the art today, we'd both really appreciate you hitting the thumbs up. Uh, YouTube then recommends this show to more people and helps us with our mission to inspire more people to give art a try. It's so important, especially in this day and age. Mental health, all that, it's it's really important. So uh, thank you in advance. Um, right, now I'm going to go back to Catherine and I'm going to discuss what we're going to be doing and what we've got planned for the longer workshop, uh, which is happening in a few weeks' time. Um, so, Catherine, back to you. Um, what what are we planning for the longer workshop? It's building on the theme of today, isn't it? Yes, that's right. So we thought that um, this time of year would be quite fun to um, play with the idea of sunlight still. So it's going to be that incredible glow on the horizon. But as it's nearly Christmas, we thought <laughs> a bit of snow. So wonderful thing about snow, it's a very reflective surface. So on top of the white of the sun, you're going to be reserving the white on part of the snow. So um, it really glows. Can you see just beneath the sun, there's a section of, of um, uh, a profile of the snow that's really glowing. Uh, that's another little area of white that we're going to have to keep. We'll look at clouds, soft, soft um, shape, cloud shapes. And um, we'll be introducing the idea of um, warm colours and cool colours. So the warm colours dominantly in the top half of the painting, all those lovely uh, colours we've been talking about today. But in addition, there's nothing like turquoise um, to suggest cool. And um, the snow itself will be a mixture of um, cool, cool uh, turquoise plus ultramarine where it gets a little bit deeper and darker. And then we're going to bring in my favourite, um, my, my violet in as well. So um, quinacridone violet. Brilliant. So that's going to be uh, a very similar combination to today's subject but in um, uh, developed a bit further. Yes, developed a bit more depth. I think it's, it's going to be great. I'm really looking forward to that. And I, I love some of Catherine's techniques. And you do explain the processes and the steps by steps really well, Catherine, as well. So uh, I, I know that whoever takes that is going to learn loads as well. And it's going to be held uh, a week or so from uh, before Christmas on Tuesday, 13th of December. And it's going to be at uh, half past three UK time in the afternoon. Um, as a reminder, if you're one of our 
are patrons level two and up, you automatically qualify for a workshop discount. So you get 15% off. Um, simply click the link on our website events page. Um, to visit our website, you can either click the YouTube pop out link, which should appear just here, um, or you can see links in the description below. I'll also share my screen now and I'll show you how to go ahead and book it. So you click on the events tab in the menu. And then when you're on all our upcoming live events, scroll down and you'll see Catherine's just there on the 13th of December. And if you click the button book event, uh, does what it says on the tin, scroll down and there's a link to visit Catherine's shop where you can then uh, book your place. It's got more information on that page as well with some of the reference photos. You'll be sent all those the day before. You need to click just there, <laughs> um, obviously scroll down um, and then select your ticket. You can either have just live webinar entry or you can have the webinar plus the video as well and then add it to cart and check out. Um, no matter where you are, although it is in pounds, um, your card issue will convert it to your local currency after checkout. Once you've done that, you can then head over. If you do order the video as well, you can head over to our video tutorial library at any stage, search for Catherine, and you'll be able to then play the watch button uh, there and watch watch the video and you can see some of the previous workshops and everything that we've done with Catherine there um, just a quick little plug as well we are launching tomorrow our art courses section and you can see our courses we're just we're starting off with color theory tomorrow featuring six artists so you can find out all about that uh, just head over to our website and have a look right hopefully that helps and um, really looking forward to that upcoming workshop as well. It should be really uh, great. Um, I love the gravity thing. I, I, I can imagine some of you might have got a little bit messy at home, but um, we'll. Uh, I'd love to hear the war stories. Uh, do do but do share. Um, but let's go back to Catherine now for the second half of the tutorial as we start to bring it to life a bit more and add that tree as well. Thanks very much, John. That's wonderful. So now, just a few comments, Catherine, uh, about you... your paintings that you showed from people. So uh, Victoria said, all lovely paintings, but my favourite is the one with the sun and flowers and the grasses. Um, oh. Hazel loved the glasses, grasses. Um, Sarah said, I, um, Steph said, wow, fabulous artworks, deliciously atmospheric. Um, Hazel, um, I remember... Catherine's two great classes, the blue barge and the green boat. Yes, that's right. And oh, yeah. uh, Elizabeth said, hi, Catherine. I liked all your pictures, but really like the two sheds. Really great. Um, mm -hmm. So there you go. Some great feedback. Thank you, everyone. Lovely. Thanks so much for that. It's lovely to know that you're out there. <laughs> um, so uh, we're going to carry on now with this um, scene. I'm going to, um, I've brought up the one that was um, advertising the class. Let me just go back to the one we've been doing today. So you can see the drips. I mean, normally we'd be painting to the bottom, but uh, it's just the, the size of um, the camera at the moment that I'm not going to, to do that, just so that you can see everything. Um, so this is like a little, imagine this is a little motif. Um, we, you know, we'd, we'd frame right up to that. Let me just uh, suggest, um, we're gonna do a little bit more layering now. And um, before I do add any more water, I'm going to remove the W. So that really helps. And I'm going to softly remove the circle round the sun. Now it's interesting because um, this eraser does rub out through every color bar lemon yellow. So, but the thing is it, it does pretty much disappear. You won't, now I wanted to leave that there because I want to show you something that's quite amazing. Some of these colors are opaque, that is they're solid. Getting that wins the lemon back again. I don't like that um, area of um, pencil. So I'm gonna go over that with a bit of Windsor lemon. And now I'm going to grab cadmium yellow. Cadmium yellow is um, an opaque color means that it covers up whatever it's on top of. Look at that. So you can actually obscure your pencil marks and they won't show through, even with a light color. 
So there's lots of possibilities for, um, you know, uh, adjusting your, your painting with these opaque colours because they'll go straight on top and um, obscure the, the pencil line. Okay, so I just thought I'd show you that. We often think of just the, the dark colours as being sort of thick, um, but actually lighter colours can be thick and lie on top. And you can see the, the pencil line through the lemon yellow, but you can't see it through the cadmium yellow. Okay, so it's useful to find out. There's, the details are on the outside of all of these um, tubes. Uh, also, um, manufacturers like Winter and Newton, they have a really good website with loads of info there. So it's worth having a little look if you get time. So we've got a little bit of a glow going on here. Should we maybe put some rays onto our painting? So remember we were talking about this lifting off brush. What I tend to do is to make it work, I wet it and then I squeeze it out so that it's now damp. Okay, I'm gonna get some kitchen roll because the choice is either leave the paint on that I wash away or remove it. So we shall see which I do. So let me just see. I've already got a rather helpful gap here. Do you see that? So it's gonna shine a bit under these lights, but I'm going through and initially, I'm not going to remove any paint with the kitchen roll. I'm just going to see. Now, when this dries, you'll be able to get a better idea um, of the effect this has. Just eating into that burnt umber and um, ultramarine. Let's just put a little bit of yellow back in there. Let it dry and we'll see. So now I'm going to actually remove some of this paint with the kitchen roll as I wash it, because this is very white, this area. So we really need to get right back to the paper for this ray to show up. The lower part here, you can see the ray because of the dark, juxtaposition of the paint, but this ray is coming right out to the side. And then let's have a little one in here. So each time I'm going back into my water and I'm washing off the paint, off the brush, because I, it's it's going on the brush when it when it comes off the page it goes onto the brush and I if you keep rubbing a dirty brush you'll just smear the paint into the into the paper I'm going to get some clean kitchen roll too rays don't really just go down um we'd carry on and make some more higher up the sun but we may run out of time if I do that so I'm just going to make a couple coming out the bottom there. So as this dries, you should be able to see a bit better because the, the shiny um, water won't be obscuring the painting so much. Let's get rid of that. Kitchen roll removes all the paint. So we're starting to have a sort of a very um, strong bit of sunlight, aren't we? Maybe we'll put a little bit more of that yellow in there. What I always do as part of my process is to, to actually pop my painting down and come back to it when I'm really fresh, because you can make decisions like this, like washing away paint when you're tired. And then the worrying thing is you've done the deed <laughs> and then you might regret it. So it's quite good to make these decisions when you're quite fresh. Okay, a little bit regular at the moment. Let's get, what I'm doing initially is washing, spreading that cadmium yellow. So let's just blur it.
So you can see the idea anyway, you've now got um, this lasting sun. If you can imagine if we're a little bit further back, the effect may be a little bit stronger. Um, we're really quite on top of this painting, aren't we? <laughs> I'm just putting in a little bit of other light, bright light in between these. Let that dry and you'll see. So all of this is going to help suggest that there's a glow there. So I'm going to pop a tree in now. I'm going to put it to the right here. I think, mm, let's think, or do I put it over there? So this is the great thing about working from the imagination. You, know, you can make decisions at any point um, and knowing that you can lift off. I'm just going to put in a little bit more of a suggestion of a hillside in here. But do you notice where I've put it? It's in between these two rays so that you can only really see things where there's no ray. See that? So we'll work some more blue in there. <clears throat> Just extend this out a little bit. Bear with me when I get some more of these. The earth colours are the ultramarine and the burnt umber. So again, working wet in wet. I, for some reason, after the break, this um, I pop the camera phone back on, and actually it's a little bit further out. So that's you've got a bit more space to the right. So I'll fill it in a little it's bit. It's a more. mind of its own. It's a it's mind of its own. Definitely has. So it's not just what lifting off features. You can you can wash away dirty paint if you don't like it. So I just saw a bit of blue got into there. So I've just washed that away. So lifting off can be just as almost like a housekeeping. Um, decision but it also creates features as we've shown. So we've got a hillside here, it's wet so I won't be able to paint on top of that for a little while, let that dry. I'm going to reach for my rigger now, the fine brush. Now fine brushes give you control, they're shorter bristles, they're about that much. You can see how that cadmium yellow gets all over my hand. So a fine brush might be about that length. The thing about a rigger is it's very, very long and basically it gets a little bit floppy and it's quite hard to control. And the great thing about that is when you're drawing little um, branches and twigs, you want a little bit of shake because that's how the, um, the tree actually forms. So I'm gonna, use the darks that I've already got in this painting. There's a bit of burnt umber on that brush. Let's put it through here and I'm lifting up from the bottom and I, what I'm doing is I'm using my little finger just off camera, just on the end there, to control my hand so that I have some lack of control created by the rigger but I've also got, you know, at least it's going somewhere I want it to as well. Now, just to show you, if I get up and over, you can actually create a very thick line. Let me just get a bit more paint to show you. The rigger will create a thick line if you press it down. So there's a bit of a thicker line for you. And then if you just keep lifting and lifting and lifting and lifting, you end up with the right tapering effect that you need for trees. They taper, don't they, as you go up. Um, so I've got just ultramarine, just one colour there. Let me just drop in. That's, that's a useful tip, that, Catherine, yes, because obviously as Lift the tree grows, it gets thinner and thinner, doesn't it, towards the top? Yes, you don't want a thicker branch, a branch that's thicker than the trunk. So that branch is widening. So therefore, this trunk needs to be wider too and then it suddenly looks a little bit more in keeping um, so I've got gone in with ultramarine now and um, I will lift off again where this ray is because you won't see the tree trunk in that ray it's going to be um, blasted by the sun but this is where um, I'm going to reach for one of my sun colors I've got um, permanent red so that's in the painting down here. 
just going to remove some of that paint just to soften it because it's getting towards the sun. Can you see how now it looks like that tree has been blasted by the light? Mm. And I'm going to reach now for the cadmium yellow. Let's get under so you can see. Even bright color, uh, light colors like this can be used to suggest uh, the wood. So it there, remember this one's opaque, so it, you can see it against the white very easily. So as I'm going towards the sun, I'm making them fiery, fiery colouring. And you wouldn't really see this tree in front of the sun at all, I don't think. The sun's just too strong. Always trying to start with the lower part of all of these um, branches, because if you pull them out of the, um, the main branch, you actually can rob the colour you've already painted as well. So I've got a bit of the, the branch colour has gone up into that. And it just ties everything in. Rather than starting with fresh colour, you can just rob colour out of this. So let me just make a really dark um, dark blue one. Look at this gravity painting in action. It's escaping me. So sometimes I would keep the paint running down, but this hillside can barely be seen, so I shouldn't have too much hillside showing. So I'm just filling, see the, you can rub this brush as well to create sort of the idea. Behave. It's getting the angle on the camera without um, obscuring what you're doing. Hold on a sec. So, you need dry brush strokes to create the idea of a cloud of um, twigs. So you don't actually have to paint every single twig. It's showing up stronger than on the camera than on the page that. It's actually quite thin on the page, that's strange. So can you imagine, you can, you can thicken up um, a canopy like that, but if, if there's really, uh, leaves there then they really should obscure some of these branches so you go back in with your good old lifting off brush and cover up some of those just soften and then they look like they go behind some of this canopy so where the branch disappears it looks like maybe there's um, some either twigs or canopy in front so even the canopy should really be blasted by the light. Let's just get a little bit of that in. How are we doing for time, John? Yes, we are pretty much there. So I think this there. that was a great the, final little technique. So very to, last, uh, <laughs> yeah, finish off with just lifting out that poor tree trunk has got to go. It's blasted by the sun. So what I would do is wash away and then replace that colour with something like permanent red oh. and then maybe a little bit of that cadmium again cadmium yellow so items that are in the shaft of light will tend to be knocked back by the sun and then you've got that illusion hopefully of light brilliant there you go. it's a tiny motif the no, size I think that's, that's great and i think hopefully everybody's got the idea of some of the things that you bring to your art there with the I, I love the effects the using gravity using the force of nature to help you with your, your paintings and bring the and the way that you've used the light through those things as well and and what light does to objects I think that's really lovely <laughs> and how did you get on at home would love to see I've, I've been having a look at the uh the patron whatsapp and um Hazel posted one of her paintings uh, I, I did ask her has she got much mess on the floor because i can see all the drops had uh, faded down so hopefully not too messy there hazel um we'd love to see what you've created from the class uh, if if you're one of our patrons do share on the whatsapp um alternatively you can use our facebook page and the post relating to this class is already on there so uh, go and have a look for that and share your art on there 
And also, if you're on YouTube, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, like I said before, and, and subscribe to our channel. Also, be sure to click the notifications bell when you subscribe, as it then notifies you when we launch a new video with a new artist as well. That's always quite an important bit. I'll now go back to Catherine and um, we'll say goodbye. Now, Catherine, would you mind um, putting the camera on your face at all? <laughs> Let's do that. Thank yeah, you. sorry about that. It's an anonymous workshop. <laughs> yes, I know, I know. No, it was it was really wonderful. And uh, thank you so much. I know everybody really appreciated it. Uh, really looking forward to seeing everybody's art as well later. Um, Bobby said she's fascinated by the hedge blossoms that you showed in that, that middle uh, picture. Uh, I don't know whether there are any hedge blossoms in the workshop um, at all, but... We could. I'm going to make a note to self. If she's going to come along, I will uh, try and build that in. No problem. Yeah, brilliant. And Sandra said, inspiring demo, eager to have a go. Thank you. Um, and Hazel said, can't wait for the long workshop. Uh, really looking forward to that. Um, yep, hope your carpet wasn't too messy there, Hazel. Um, and Christine, very interesting and enjoyable. Uh, thank you, everybody. Lo some lovely comments. And when we do this workshop, it's a lovely scene. It's very appropriate for Christmas as well, because it's that sort of wintry scene, isn't it? And uh, I know we'll be able to get your <laughs> your camera. Your Well, it's okay. more your laptop, I think, that was the First issue. Thing when I go is going to look into that so that it'll be fine it'll be fine <laughs> uh Helen said thank you for a great workshop as well they're, they're coming in in in, in dribbles and drabs but uh thank you so much everybody for joining us uh, until next time it's obviously goodbye from me but thank you obviously uh for your time today to Catherine thanks Catherine you get a big round of applause Catherine thank you And you did so well. Well done for, for muddling through that and painting at an angle. <laughs> Bye, Rob.